Welcome back to Ryan Williams Art Channel. This is episode 22, and this is a new portrait, a triple portrait. It is a portrait of a mother and her two sons. So this was a commission portrait, commissioned by a friend of mine, who had an idea to give a painting of this lady and her two sons as a gift. This proved to be a very challenging portrait, not for the fact that it's three people, but for the fact that I was given just one photograph to work with. Now why is that challenging? Well, a couple things. One, the light in this particular photograph, it was at an angle as such that it made their faces look kind of flat. And uh, photographs have a way of flattening out people, or objects in general. It's just, just the nature of, of cameras. What's great about painting is we really control the light. We will dictate how much volume, how much texture you see. So in any other situation, if I was doing a portrait, I would want multiple shots, different angles, experimenting with light a little bit, just so I can come up with a kind of a visual map of the contours of the person's face. But with this one, with just one photograph, I had to improvise, and uh, I kept the the layout the same. It's still the three people, but the the light as it hits their faces had to be changed a bit. And this proved to be so challenging because with just one photograph, um, I really had to stay their faces. I had to repaint a couple of these faces. In fact, this one here, this first one, I believe I painted his face three or four times, maybe maybe three times. Uh, because when I was experimenting with the light, um, I would tend to change the proportions of the face a little bit because I was trying to work with shadows on the neck and on the chin and on the nose and all those experiments led, led me to distort the face just a little bit and then so I would start over and repaint it. That's what made this one so challenging. You can see in this early stage, I'm trying to establish where based on what I'm seeing in the photograph, where I think his cheekbones are, where the bridge of his nose is, where his eyebrows are, and, you know, I'm just trying to figure out the best way to highlight his face. I want to see how high can I go with these highlights, you know, how bright and how dark can I go with these shadows. I couldn't go too heavy on the cast shadows because it, I didn't want to exaggerate to the point where it didn't look real. I had to retain just a little bit of a photorealistic look. But obviously this is a painting, so if you want to go full photographic quality, well then just keep the photograph, right? This is a painting, and so generally people who commission a portrait, they expect to see a little bit of the artist's style in the painting. So as I said, I, I worked with the composition just a little bit. You know, in the photograph is three of them sitting on the beach. And about the really the only major change I made to that composition is this first person here. In the photograph he's farther away from his mother. I brought him in closer because I wanted him to be as close to his mother as the other side is on the other side. And um, when I actually brought them in to be you know inquisitant from the mother's head, uh, that, that didn't look right to me. Gen generally you don't want symmetry when you're doing a composition. It's just it's boring. And so the better plan, again this is all my opinion, the better plan is that what I thought for this was to take one head and just have it just slightly farther apart than the other head and it makes it a little more interesting. So in this case the head on the left is a little bit closer to the mother than the head on the right. So on the mother though, as I'm painting her now, I was pretty satisfied with the light on this head. It it seemed to work. I think I was pretty successful in establishing how the light should hit. And that's the other thing. Be because the photograph showed them at an angle to a low level light, you know, probably at sunset or sunrise or just after. Um, and I wanted to 
elevate the light a little bit, I had to make sure that when I changed all the shadows, that they were all at the same angle. Like all three of their noses, the light, you know, the cast shadow had to be at the same angle, and and the shadows on their lips and the eyebrows. Because if one of those shadows is a different angle, <laughs> it's not going to make any sense, right? So I mean, we don't have two suns. You know, this isn't Tatooine. Star Wars reference. So I experimented with um, with that. Well, on her, I was very satisfied with the light, so I didn't have to repaint her face. I did touch ups and stuff like that. But, you know. So generally, on these portraits, I try to paint in the darks first, then I go to the midtones, then I go to the lights. And because I only had one photo to work with, I would kind of go back and, and redo certain sections. I might redo a midtone, I might redo a, a shadow. But in general, if I have all the material in front of me, I like to go dark, midtone, lights, highlights. You can probably see here, you know, there's already a lot of reflection in this wet paint. I started adding layers to these faces. I wanted them to have a glow. I wanted them to have some kind of a luminosity, so I used a fair amount of uh, painting medium and did some glazes, multiple layers. You'll notice the sun's face on the left. That was my first um, run at working his face in. So when this paint's finished, you will notice he will look different. Uh, especially his nose. In fact, in this first trial, the the top of his nose is too narrow, so I had to widen out a little bit. If you're wondering about the charcoal grid lines there, uh, I take the photograph, put it into a photo editor program, and I have a grid, a one by one inch grid, laid over top of it, and then I measure out on the canvas, one inch by one inch, and then I it's called sizing up, so I size it up. So everything's in proportion, and that way I can sketch the proportions of the faces. And uh, so it's a nice, easy way to make sure the proportions of the faces are, are there. Eventually, I may just start trying to sketch these faces, you know, freehand with a brush. But to try and get these things out in a timely manner, when people have paid me for a commission, um, I'll, for now I'm sticking with this because I'm familiar with this. Okay, so now I gotta explain something. So you see the other two faces, how they've got. <laughs> they've got. The, it's not acne, folks. It's. They've got globs of paint all over their faces. Well, I made a. a serious. error in judgment when I was prepping this canvas. So what happens is. I think most artists are like this. They want a smoother canvas when they're doing portraits. You know, if you, if you just take a canvas out of the store, unwrap it, and you start painting on it. Generally, these canvases have some teeth to them, you know, the, the weave, so it's got some bumps to it. Well, if you want to blend, if you want to get smooth blending for skin tones, but you either get a linen canvas, which is much smoother, or what I do, because it saves a little bit of money, I get some acrylic gesso, and then I just put it over the canvas, let it dry, sand it, put another layer on, let it dry, sand it, and then... You know, I might do two or three layers, and then when it's smooth enough, I paint on it. But, well, I made a mistake here in that I didn't sand this as well as I thought I did. I thought uh, I thought I'd sand this to be perfectly smooth, and it was not. It was not smooth, and it was when I ran my hand over it, it felt smooth. But it wasn't until I started painting these faces I realized, holy cow, uh, when light hits. The, the bumps from the gesso cast a shadow and makes their faces look all wrinkled and old and so what I did here is I overlaid some paint to try and smooth it out and I got some of it knocked down Now the paint still has some texture which is fine I'm okay with a little bit of texture but the way it was originally it was way too much texture I you know you wouldn't notice it if you had even light shining on it but good God if you put <laughs> if you put an, uh, one light source at a side 
they look totally different. They, they look like they were, you know, a bunch of smokers, so I had to <laughs> flatten that out. I don't want them to, to have that look. That's not flattering, you know. So, flatten it out, and, um, you know, like I said, a little bit of texture's fine, but so anyways, that's what that was about, and now you can see I painted over it, and, um, yeah, I was pretty mad at myself because I, I, I wasted a little bit of time on the first the first run at those faces. I had to repaint them, so... You notice this guy here, there's a lot of dark uh, to start with. Dark blues, dark purples. What I was trying to accomplish is make his face on the right darker. So I'm trying to keep the eye in the painting. I didn't, I, you know, if I keep it dark on the sides, and hopefully I keep the, the line of sight that the viewer has going towards the center. Kind of like I'm trying to frame in their their vision, you know. So I'm painting the clothes here. Made some small modifications to the clothes um, from the photograph. In the photograph, they were all very similar values, so I changed the values a little bit. But it's the same style of clothing. Uh, you see the unpainted hole in the chest there of the middle figure. She's wearing some jewelry. That's going to be jewelry. That's why it's not painted yet. Okay, so here I am once again trying to experiment with the light. And, um, yeah, I have to say, another mistake I made here, and I'm very open. I'll, I make mistakes on every painting, but that's okay because, hey, you learn something when you make a mistake. Hopefully you learn something. And I learned not to forget <laughs> to tone the canvas. When I started painting these faces, the canvas is white. Big no-no in my opinion, because when you paint against white, it's influencing what you're seeing when you're laying down paint. So the colors that we see, we see them because of their relationship to the colors around them. And I didn't actually tone this canvas until I was about halfway through the first face and I realized, you know, my color scheme, it's, it's too dark or it's too light, it looks, you know, looks a little bit flat. I better tone the canvas because I, I was trying to figure out what am I not seeing here. And so that's why the background now is, is a brown color so I can properly uh, gauge the, the tones there. So now I'm prepping the background and, and then this will be about done. Well, this has been a a quick uh, study. Hope you enjoyed it. There's the final product sitting on the beach. Thanks a lot. If you have any questions, feel free to send me a message. And hey, if you want a painting, let me know. I'm open to commissions. Take it easy.